Mr. Mandupadya, and welcome to the Banking Show. So uh, let's uh, dig into the uh, main question that we have on our minds today, that post the revelations in the Hindenburg report, there have been a lot of assurances from the bank, uh, banks in India and the RBI that uh, everything is all right as far as exposure to Adani goes. What is your take? How concerned are you about the situation? The banking system exposure to the Adani group is less than 80,000 crore. Now, what is the total credit market in India is more than 130 trillion. So theoretically, it's, it's not the case at all. If the entire loan turns bad, and if there is no asset to back up, and if the entire close to 80,000 crore loan banks need to um, um, declare as NPA, what will be the hit on their balance sheet? It's about 60, 70 basis point, little more than half a percentage, half a percent. Uh, you look at the between SR and Bhushan Steel, the combined exposure, uh, what the banks claimed was 1.03 trillion. The first 12 cases, which gone into IBC in 2017, their combined banks combined exposure was close to three and a half trillion. So this is not a substantial amount which can affect the bank. And mind you, this is well within the bank's exposure limit. What is the bank's exposure limit? And this is not in India. This is a Basel norm. Across the globe, this is, this is a fact. A bank can take an exposure up to 25% to a group and 20% to an entity. I am repeating, this is the Basel norm. Till I think 2016, it was 40% to a group and 25% to an entity. And on top of that, banks were allowed to take even extra if they are if they are um, um, uh, lending for infrastructure um, uh, projects. So it could have taken the group exposure to 50% and single entity exposure to 30%. What about the exposure to the NBFCs and are there any systemic issues there, you think? Yeah, there are exposure to NBFCs, but again, just look at the whatever the published um, uh, information here say. We uh, I have gone through is this, uh, the Adani group's total debt is 2 trillion plus. Mm out of which close to 80,000 is to Indian banks. And then you go to the, um, uh, to check their exposure to overseas, which is quite a bit. I think it would be another, uh, it would be uh, it would be a trillion or so in, in the current exchange rate. So that total NBFC exposure, I'm not qualified to say, but I don't think it is hugely significant to, 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 uh, to create a systemic risk. That is good. Uh, so what does it all mean for the Adani group itself? What are the challenges they will face? Well, uh, as you have seen that um, there are some certain bonds have already become junk. Uh, you know, they are, <laughs> they are, their yield has risen dramatically over the last uh, fortnight or so. So what does it mean? They will find it extremely difficult to raise money overseas. So then they will shift. They, they have no choice but to shift to the uh, domestic market uh, to raise funds. Now, will the banks welcome them with uh, garlands? I doubt, uh, because the banks are very different now what the banks were uh, before the so-called AQR asset quality review, uh, which RBI conducted in 2016-17 to clean up, clean up the system. The bank's uh, underwriting capability, risk management, etc., is far better than what it was uh, seven, eight years back. So banks will be circumspect, circumspect, and banks will not be exactly forthcoming with garlands to um, uh, to give money to them. So what does this mean? That Adani Group's cost of fund will go up. They will find it difficult to raise money, and they have to curb their ambition. One last question we have is: uh, India wants to become a five trillion economy. Infrastructure is a big part of it. How does it impact our infrastructure financing, and what are our options now? But the ideal way of doing it is whoever is building infrastructure, let them raise the first round during the construction fine. It's a high risk, high price uh, loan. Let them uh, raise from the bond market and let the banks come in the next stage when the risk is less and pick up the pick up the uh, loan from, from there. That's the way internationally it is done. And that's the way it should be done if you want to de-risk banking sector and um, build infrastructure. Of course, we need to deepen the bond market, the, the government, the regulators, everybody has been trying, but it's not as deep as it should be. So that, 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 that work is still unfinished. 
Great. Uh, so challenges remain for Adani Group. It is good to hear that banks are uh, uh, on safe ground still. And as you said about the infrastructure financing, we need to deepen our bond market. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bandapadhyay, for joining us and sharing your thoughts today. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that let success so high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.